No, let me try out my ad voice. Do you have a child at two to four years old? Are you struggling to find appropriate online resources that foster interactive, play-based learning? Well, fear not, the Caribbean mom is here to the rescue. Anisia Warwood joins us to let us know a lot more about this initiative. Thank you very much for making the time, Anisia. How are you? Hi, DK. I'm very, very excited to speak about uh, my brand, the Caribbean Mom. No, I want to start off, please. Just give us, give us the backstory. What is the Caribbean Mom about? Um, I started the Caribbean Mom because I have a toddler. She's she's going to be three in a week. And I found it really hard to find activities for her within Trinidad that promote Caribbean culture. Um, so I started the Caribbean Mom so that other moms like myself, especially during this time of um, COVID-19, that we could find activities for children, two to five, um, so that, that that would be able to occupy their time and they would learn about their culture, their heritage, not only, there are a lot of online activities, but they're more Americanized. So I started the Caribbean Mom to promote Caribbean culture activities for children, two to five. And what, wondering though, how, how, how did me? you start it in terms of like what steps? Because you know, many times we see a situation and we say, okay, well, I don't like the situation, but moving from that to say, okay, well, I'm going to do something about it to actually sort it out. What, what were those steps like? Um, in terms of starting the business itself or like or what was the even, process for me? Or possibly even before starting the business because I believe there was, a, there, was a, there was a blog involved as well. All right. So I, I had my Instagram and I would post pictures of her and then one of my friends suggested, she's like, you know, you could start a mom blog. And I was like, a mom blog? She's like, yeah, instead of posting all the content you, that your child does on your Instagram, you could do a momstagram, which is what um, mama's, mom bloggers call it, momstagram. So I was like, okay, cool. And I thought about it. And I came up with the name The Caribbean Mom since then. I was like, I'm sure this is gone. And I went and it was there. So I took all the handles. Facebook, um, Instagram uh, at once. And um, I started posting just content about my daughter, what we would be doing daily. I would print stuff or I would use stuff that I bought and um, post it online. And then she was supposed to go to school from April last year. And just a toddler based learning to prep her for preschool. And well, that did not happen because of COVID-19. Uh, before COVID-19, I had an event business. So during COVID-19, I was like, during the onset, I was like, well, I need to do something else. And there was, I was like, a lot of people need this. A lot of people are home with their kids and we could promote Caribbean culture through um, our toddlers. Appreciation of culture, I believe, begins really early. And um, so if we, teach our children even through um, the alphabet so that they can learn that within the Caribbean, we have fun things that we can do from A to Z before we look elsewhere. Um, and that's how it was born. Our first box was out of Africa because we started in September. So I went with that theme um, for September out of Africa to promote um, African culture um, and heritage and that sort of thing. Now, I like the fact that you're talking about having an appreciation of culture from early. But why, or let me ask it differently, as opposed to saying, okay, well, Trinidad and Tobago culture, which is rich and which is very inclusive, why go further from so young and say, okay, we'll be dealing with Caribbean and you just spoke about even like looking at African culture. Why was it, why does it seem so important that there is this kind of regional approach to it? Because my background is geography. Um, so, and I studied in Jamaica. So I have a deep appreciation for Caribbean culture because of that. And I think that as a region, we would be able to go so much further if uh, we truly appreciate what we have and we do have a lot. And a lot of children, you ask them something and they would be, they would, the, fir the first reference would be to the US 
and we would have the exact thing in the Caribbean or something really similar and they don't know about it and my mom is also a teacher she teaches all the children um standards three to five and uh, you see it with the older children where they um they don't know things like parang and stuff like that they are uh, so if we introduce it to them at an early age, I believe that our culture would be boosted, Caribbean culture would be boosted, not only Trinidad, because we do, we do incorporate Trinidad into our um, activities, but I also um, look at the Caribbean as a whole. No, and you say, you say something, it just mash me up, fine, 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 in terms I of like not, not knowing about Parang. I am serious. Um, the question was to them, and I'm, this is a live example. Um, what kind of music do we listen to in Trinidad at Christmas time? And they could not answer. Not even like Soka Parang. I, I feel like I've been no. laboring the point, but. She had to prompt it out of them eventually, but it, there was, maybe they took like 10 minutes. Um, somebody said it eventually, but um, as the birthplace of Parang, I think that's something that we should know. And even if it is that we know um, what the Parang band looks like, because we would use flashcards as some of the other activities include flashcards. So, you know, you prompt them to speak about uh, the activity. So it could be Parang. So you see a Parang band and the parents could say, you know, we listen to Parang. This is a YouTube video. They could show them that this um, is what Parang sounds like, that kind of thing. Yeah. So right, but we, have, we, have about, we have about two minutes on this side of, of, of the conversation. But before we get to the activities, though, you asked whether or not I was uh -huh. talking about formalizing the business. I'm asking about that now. Because you said, yes, you are an early adopter, so you were able to grab the handles on Instagram and Facebook. But what are some of the other steps that would have enabled you to kind of formalize the business? Because sometimes there's also the case of saying, OK, well, I'm doing this as a hobby, but I want to take this hobby to the next level. So what were some of those steps for you? So I would have registered my business. Um, I would have done my online, well, increased online presence in terms of having a website. Uh, I would have built that myself. Um, on Wix, yeah, I do have a couple extra talents. So I did my website and I also have um, payment options in terms of, so I would have had to register for these things in order to have payment options for my clients. So there's the usual bank transfer. We use PayPal, we use WePay to, um, so that we have a range of payment options for our customers. So those are the steps, some of the steps that I went through initially. Also um, getting equipment because I would have had to get some of the equipment that I used to create the activities, um, yeah. And we you keep on talking about those activities, but are going to keep us in suspense a little longer. We're speaking with Anisia Warwood, the Caribbean mom, and we continue the conversation when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with the founder of Caribbean Mom, Anisia Warwood. And Anisia, just before we get into those activities that you've been hinting at, hinting at, uh, what are some of those kind of gaps that you would have seen and say, okay, well, I wish there was this, I wish there was that. And how does the Caribbean Mom address those, some of those gaps? So we use, in terms of preschool curriculum, we use a... Um, I would say we follow some methods of STEAM, some critical thinking as well, a lot of critical thinking. So the boxes, you would think three years old, how much critical thinking can they do? And they can, it's simple in terms of what, it's simple, if you use simple methods, sorry, they'd be able to think critically and develop it over time. So we start the critical thinking early on. Um, our education system, I, this is my opinion, I believe, that um, we stress heavily on singing the alphabet, knowing numbers by repetition um, and stuff like that. But there's so much more to learning. So I include stuff like basic coding and you would think coding that's 
for 12 year old, but um, you could use colors, patterns or codes. So and at three, you can, they are able to do patterns and they, the education, a lot of schools in Trinidad for like three to five, they don't incorporate th that type of um, learning material in their, um, in their the system. So that system. sometimes when they get older, they can't, they now have to catch up to what they expect them to know at that age when there was no foundation built. No, and you see, I tell myself that you're what setting I mean, up the children sorry. that you're interacting with in the sense of trying to develop critical thinking, which is something that the system, and I, I like how you just try to be a little PC with the saying, well, this is my view. And I, I also think it's my view being the son of educators and then dabbling it a little myself. Um, and seeing the system kind yeah. of weighted a little unevenly towards the banking system where you basically crack open somebody's head, pour in the information, close it back, and then want them to regurgitate yeah. it on, on a, during a test or something. But, and we see how much of an import it, it is to try to engage people now that we've had to pivot to blended types of learning One is more remote than in person. But those activities, because I looked at some of the videos on your, that you would have posted on Facebook, and I saw one, you just spoke about coding, and they were sorting balls. I don't know if that was your daughter or another child. And even like in engaging motor skills. So I saw painting yeah. deers, and that was in the month of November. And we would have had the, the Wally right. subscriptions. Uh, so tell me a little bit now about the subscriptions and what they entail. So each box, each month we choose a theme. So, so far we would have had um, in September, it was out of Africa. In October, Trinbago, I love you. For November that we're seeing here, it was the Festival of Lights for Diwali. Uh, Christmas, it was a true Trinity Christmas for, for December and for January, it was Islands in the Sun. And for February, we have, we are the carnival for carnival. Um, each box contains 10 activities, play-based learning activities, where, and we tend not to repeat the activity month to month. So you're generally not going to get a repeat of the activity if you do, um, let's say a subscription for January and then February. So we include and this is my daughter here, we include um, fine motor skill activities where one month I would say like we would have had um, the children lacing, um, lacing up a national flag. So you lace the edges of the flag. So that's their fine motor skills and they get an idea of what the national flag looks like. So we increase fine motor skills, um, coding one month we had um, guide the scarlet ibis to the scarlet ibis to the nest to their nest in the swamp so i would have had a picture of a scarlet ibis the um, swamp i give them the the mat for their coding activity and they had little pieces which they would use for um it's like to make their maze so the parents would put the the obstacles in the way of the scarlet ibis. So they had trees, they had boats that they would have to fly around. So it was like a maze and then the children would have to use arrows. And this was for the higher level, four to five age bracket, where they would have to use the arrows to guide the scarlet ibis to the maze. Um, another type of activity we had for Christmas, we had, uh, we included jumbo tweezers in our boxes and we had pom-poms where you had to sort the pom-poms by color um, another way that we could have used it was to count. Um, so we, each color, we had green, red, white, and brown. Um, so you had to sort the pom-poms by color. You could count the six, one to six, and this was for the under four age bracket. Uh, if it was an older child, because at four, most children can count to 20, they would get 20 out of it, and they could count all the pom-poms together when they put them on the mat that would have been provided. And each month we give videos as well um, so that some children learn better by looking at a video compared to listening to a parent give instructions. So I include videos of the content for the parents or the children to look at 
And some parents actually prefer the videos. You'd be surprised some prefer the, the written instructions. I do include a written, um, a written format as well um, that I email to them and they complete the activities. Um, and they sometimes parents tag us and I share. No, Anissa, you're getting me excited, but I'll hold my point. Before that, though, I want to ask you about contact information. What kind of pricing it is we're looking at? Is it that somebody gets a one-time subscription, or they can say, okay, well, I want to try it out, so let me try it a month, two months, three months. How, how, what was the process of that? Right, yes, we can. you can do a one-off. So we have a one-month um, purchase where you pay 170 and you get the box for the month that um the next month our subscriptions usually open like three weeks before the the next month starts so it's february our march subscriptions would open next week and delivery is usually the first week of march first week to weekend of march um we have three month subscriptions as well as six month subscriptions available and for each month you get a little discount off of um the 170 so and the if you buy a one-off box, it's not it's 170 and it's not recurring. So you do you you don't get the charge to your card. Each month you would have to go back and buy again. Um the you pay for the three month subscription, you pay 480, you get three months. Um February, March, April, you pay upfront and you get a discount for the three month subscription if you buy all as one purchase. And the same for the six months. Those are nine twenty-five. Okay, and what's, what, what's that contact information, please? Uh, my email address is thecaribbeanmom at gmail.com. Um, my phone number is 775-9464. My Instagram handles, and I respond to messages there, as well as Facebook, The Caribbean Mom, on both Instagram and Facebook. And the website, it's www.thecaribbeanmomonline.com. And you say, what kind of work goes into preparing these resources? Because it's not as though, I guess, they're at the feet and you just see them because they're kicking, you're kicking them like stone. Um, so how much work goes into this? Where do you source these things from? Do you have to get the ideas and then transpose them to fit the culture of Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean? Right, so I have to first think about the theme. During the month, is there any festival that's important or that's celebrated within Trinidad, um, that's celebrated on a large scale, I should say. So we would have had Christmas, we would have had Diwali, we have Carnival, um, there's Easter, there's Eid al-Fitr, stuff like that I would bring into um, my theme. So some months are a given depending on the festival that's within the month. Um, some months are like last month in January, there's, there was no festival. So I brainstormed and I was like, Islands in the Sun, that's a nice one. There's a song to it and that sort of thing. So I kind of went with, and we can't travel and children would have learned, like some children would have gone on vacations and learned about islands and what they need to travel. They need a passport. They, some, you might stay in a hotel, stuff like that. They would have learned that through an experience and that's how they learn. So th sometimes that's how I come up with my themes. Like, you know, you think about what would they be missing out on because of COVID-19 or simply something that we have here in the Caribbean or even in Trinidad and Tobago that we, that they would um, learn a lot of and that I would be able to create enough content out of. That's the first step. And, um, we'll, and, and in terms of continuing those first, uh, those other steps, we'll continue the conversation hopefully at another time. But Albert Einstein says that play is the highest form of research. So we want to thank you for putting in the work for the toddlers where you see these gaps. And for mommy also providing some of that support in one way or the other. And we want to thank you for tuning in on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Roster. Have a good night.